Today I'm going to cover the basics of using odorless mineral spirits when blending colored pencils. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. Jumping right into this, I personally use Mona Lisa Odorless Paint Thinner. You can also use Gamsol that works exactly the same. I can't tell the difference between either one. Gamsol is supposed to be a little bit less toxic. I'm not sure what the science is behind any of that, but I can tell you in practice, they work the same. You're going to want a container to keep yours in. I do recommend something that has a bit of a rubber seal or something like that to help keep this from spilling. If you use just a regular screw top, it will spill if you tip it sideways. But something with a rubber top definitely keeps everything in a lot better. I use this one by Lock & Lock. I will have an Amazon link below in the video description if you want to check these out. The odorless mineral spirits, while they are odorless, they are still toxic. You don't want to sit there and breathe it in constantly or drink it. Make sure when you are not using it, you keep the lid on it. And keep it away from your kids. If you've got little ones around and they might come up and drink something, keep this far away from them. It is toxic. But as long as you keep the lid on it, I've never had a problem with it. I keep the lid on whenever I'm not actually using it. It's sitting next to me all the time, but that lid is secure. Just use common sense. I've gotten it on my skin and had no reaction, and I have fairly sensitive skin. Never had a reaction to that. It's not as scary as some people seem to think that it is. But again, use common sense. As far as natural alternatives, I will say, first, I'm a huge fan of natural alternatives for just about everything. But you have to remember, just because something is natural, it does not mean that it's not an irritant. I have tried lavender paint thinners. I tried the natural terpenoid. Those gave me an instant headache. My throat and lungs felt like they were closing up. I had a horrible reaction to those. Some people are fine with them. I am not. I've never had a reaction with the Mona Lisa odorless mineral spirits or the Gamsol. And I am very prone to headaches. Everything causes headaches for me and I've not had a problem with this. Everybody's gonna be different, but I thought I'd throw that out there. So for the type of paper, I have used this on many, many types of paper and really not had a problem. I do use a low tack tape and tape my work down along the edges so that if the paper does kind of buckle or warp a little bit, it dries back into place. I've used this on some inexpensive Strathmore paper that was about, I wanna say it was 60, 65 pounds. Didn't have a problem with it. I love it on my Fabriano Artistico. I also use it on Stonehenge like I did here. Stonehenge is more absorbent and so it does take a lot longer for it to dry on Stonehenge than it does when I use something like Fabriano Artistico. With the Fabriano Artistico Extra White Hot Press 140 pound watercolor paper that I typically use, that one things will be dry within 30 seconds to a minute. Whereas the same amount of paint that are used on Stonehenge may take like 10 minutes to dry. So with that, we will move on to the demonstration. So I've got my paint thinner to the side. Notice that the lid is on when I'm not using it. I've got my piece of Viva paper towel. It has to be Viva because this is very cloth-like, whereas normal paper towels, it absorbs the paint thinner really weirdly. I've got my favorite brush for blending. This is the Low Cornell. It's a Filbert brush, a number eight Taclon bristle. You do not have to go with a name brand. You can go with a generic brush. One of the other brushes that I use quite often is this flat brush for smaller areas. This is also a Taclon bristled brush. It's a generic, there's no name on it anywhere. It's a number six flat. So don't feel like you have to run out and get name brand brushes for this. I'm going to do this demonstration on this little teeny adorable pad of Stonehenge. So as you work, you don't wanna just scribble. Just because you've got paint thinner, it doesn't mean that that's going to blend smoothly. What I'm going to do is work in small circles, just like I normally would. I wanna keep my coverage very, very smooth. I say circles, but they're really more ovals. So I will fill in whatever area I want. There's layer one. Let's add a little bit of shading. Now, if I just blend this out, I'm not going to have very good results. It's going to be very, very grainy and gritty because there's not enough pigment on the paper. What I'm going to do now is add my next layer before I ever blend with the paint thinner. And I'm going to layer this lighter aqua color right over the darker color so that I've got a nice transition between the two. There's layer two. We can even add a little bit more shading on this side. Now I'm going to add another layer. You have to have enough pigment on the paper for this to work. Now that I've got my color there, I can go ahead and remove the lid from my container of paint thinner. Notice I do not have much in there. A little bit goes a very long ways with this. I'm going to dip my brush into that and I'm going to dab it onto the paper. Now I've used this brush before for blending these colors and so you can see some of the color is coming off on my paper. The odorless mineral spirits or paint thinner, it is a brush cleaner. You don't need to use a different brush. If you need to clean your brush, just rinse it off really well in that paint thinner and wipe it off on your paper towel. Now I'm going to put the lid back on that. 
and I can work in little circles and get a very nice smooth blending here. Now I need to let this dry completely before I go on to my next layer. And the reason for that is if you go right over paper that is wet, it's going to damage the tooth of the paper, which is kind of defeating the point of blending with paint thinner, which allows you to blend without damaging the tooth. So let that dry completely. How long it takes to dry is going to depend on what type of paper you're using and how much paint thinner you applied. Now, while we wait for that to dry, I'm going to add a second color so I can show you how these would smudge together way too easily if you're not careful and how to avoid having them smudge together. So now that the paper is dry, we can go ahead and add our next layer. I'm working in small circles or small ovals, I should say. And the reason that I work in ovals is to keep my transition from one pencil stroke to the next fairly seamless. If I do this, I end up with really harsh start and stop lines. By doing ovals, it's, it keeps it very smooth, very seamless. Add my next color here. My paintbrush is still pretty wet from my last time of blending, so I don't need to dip that back in the paint thinner again. I can just work straight onto what I have here with what is left on that brush. If I had blended out a large area where a lot of the paint thinner came off the brush onto the paper, then yeah, I may have to dip my brush a few times, but because this is such a small area, I didn't use much last time, I don't need to re-dip that. Don't feel like every single time you blend, you automatically need to dip it into your paint thinner. Check to see how wet it still is before you jump onto your project. I'm gonna blend out these edges so I don't have this heavy ring here. I'm just gonna pull that in. And you can see you will end up with brush strokes occasionally. You just have to practice how to control that and minimize heavy brush strokes from showing. Now, if I were to just take this and start blending into the yellow, look at how much green or turquoise is on my paintbrush. So what I've got to do is clean this first. Dip that in there, go in little circles on the paper until that brush comes out clean. Now I'm, I can go ahead and blend this area. I do not want to blend these two colors together, so I've gotta blend this separately. I can't just blend back and forth in between the two or I will end up with this. If that's the look you want, great, but if you're trying to keep your colors separate, you wanna blend them separately. So this area, let's go ahead and actually keep separate. I'm gonna clean off my brush first to get rid of any of the turquoise color. And now as I blend the yellow and the orange, I'm not going to let it touch that turquoise. You just wanna blend those two zones separately. Now, once that's dry, I can go back over with another layer and you can repeat this process as many times as you need to. As you get into further layers though, you're going to use less and less paint thinner on your brush. So I'm intentionally going to let this set out and dry a little bit before I head over to my project. The reason for that is once you get a lot of pencil on your paper, the paint thinner will start to lift some of that color off of the paper. So in order to keep that from happening and to just get nice, soft, smooth blending, I'm not going to keep adding more paint thinner. I wanna let that set out and dry a bit. And you'll know that you need to let it set a little bit longer based on if it starts to lift the colored pencil. Now, just to show you what I mean by lifting, if I've got a lot of paint thinner on there, look at how it starts to pull some of that color off. So I've got where it's a lot darker and then, then it starts to fade quite a bit. Again, putting that lid back on, I do not wanna let that set out. You will see this quite a bit when I'm doing portraits. When I get to the last layers of skin, I've barely got any paint thinner on that brush. Whereas my first layers, I have a lot of paint thinner on it. So you'll just need to practice with it to get a feel for how much paint thinner you do or don't want on that brush. Thanks for watching. If you're new to my channel, I have new video critiques every Tuesday where I'm critiquing your original paintings or drawings, my own speed paintings, drawings, and tutorials every Wednesday, art Q&A videos every Thursday, and artist vlogs each weekend. So if you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. And you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+, Plus. all of those social media sites are linked below in the video description where you can keep up with news, my newest work, and see real-time clips of whatever it is I'm currently working on. I'll see you guys in a few days.